today is um march 25th when i made that last video about how i was gonna watch all of the remakes or adaptations i guess i should say i compared adaptations to making like a fashion line where you don't want to just put out the same dress in one line you might want to communicate an idea through your collection and have that idea be explored in different ways and not just take one dress put it on a different model and then add like a belt or something you know in this video i'm gonna compare storytelling to taking a road trip sometimes you take a road trip you might take some detours you might take the scenic route you might stop at a few rest stops you might whiz past a few rest stops with the french adaptation i feel like it's pretty much taking the exact same route. Sometimes a few details will be changed. We might stop at a different restaurant than we stopped at our last road trip. We might whiz past a few rest stops. We may whiz past a lot of rest stops. There might be a few details here and there that are different, but ultimately it looks like it's going down the same path and it's not really introducing a lot of things original. They're just making a few small changes, but those small changes aren't really adding up to big changes and it's not appearing to add up to having a different conclusion or, you know, going in a completely different direction. I would much prefer it if the adaptations had different characters that were based off of the actors and based off of like the culture or whatever. Just take like the same format and some of the same themes, but mix it up because I really miss, I guess, the surprise element, wondering where the story is going to go, who's going to get the next season, blah, blah, blah. And I'm kind of bored already knowing the story and already knowing how it's going to go and knowing that I can't get my hopes up when they change a few things around because those few changes aren't necessarily going to lead us to a different main road. We're just going to swerve right back into doing the same road as the original. Example of like different details or different opportunities to go down different roads. So you know how in the first season Jonas is really good friends with this guy Elias and then he just kind of disappears off the face of the earth and then in season three when we follow Isak they're suddenly best friends with these two other guys who we hadn't really seen. I'm not really sure what exactly happened there. Maybe the actor who played Elias was no longer available so then they just cut him from the show. But I think it'd be interesting in the remakes to further explore what was going on with Elias. There's a line in the original Scum where Eva says to Jonas, you're a completely different person around him. And I thought, you know, that's not true. He's an asshole in general. But in the French version, I actually think that that's true. What's his name in the French version? Is it Tom? When he shows up, he is more of a dick, not just to Emma, but to Lucas. So I think it'd be interesting to further explore that. But I do feel like the French one is a little bit too close to the original that they wouldn't do something like that. The German version aired this week and I have good feelings about the first episode so far. I really like I really liked that in the German version that Amira was introduced earlier and this is a different turn in the road in our road trip but my question is will that turn in the road lead to other big changes that might lead to significant changes that significantly changes the story later on or are we going to make another turn and eventually end up in the same road as the original. I don't know. Personally, I would love it if Hana gave Amira a Facebook friend request and if she became friends with her and if the second season ended up being about her and not about Mia with Wolfgang. Wolfgang. But I think that's wishful thinking. I'd love it if that happened, but mm -mm, I don't think it will. 
So I want to talk a little bit about why season one is my favorite because when I was watching the French version, I was thinking this whole drama that happens towards the end of the season, it's kind of cliche in that I feel like oftentimes when there's cheating in stories as like the dramatic conflict or whatever, it usually comes about because of a miscommunication and then they cheat immediately after they cheat, they find out that the thing that they were mad about that had hurt them, that caused them to cheat in the first place that wasn't as big of a deal as they had originally thought and I usually hate cheating storylines because they go through that same formula but I felt like this kind of broke the formula in that the drama wasn't just about the cheating it was about everything else it was about all the trust issues that we've seen since episode one it was about what had happened between her and Ingrid and speaking of Ingrid and also of even at some parts it looks like conventional girl hate where you see these teenage girls just bickering and bitching and fighting over some guy in their lives and I've seen a lot of YA do that and like and not be critical of it one example being Anna and the French Kiss and I think that there are a lot of stories like Anna and the French Kiss that show like cheating's okay because it's true love. And I liked that this season showed the aftermath of what happens after you enter in a relationship that was started by cheating. We humanize Ingrid. We humanize Eben. We don't see other girls as just an obstacle to get to the guy that we like, you know? I love the scene when Even tells Eva that she had broken up with Chris and she wanted to throw a girl power Christmas party. Love it. I'm not a big fan of how in later seasons Eva was like hooking up with Chris. It, it just kind of seems out of nowhere and I feel like they should have at least explained what was going on better rather than us just see it in the background. But anyway, I felt like season one of original scum. It showed that being in a romantic relationship isn't everything because in the beginning of this story, Eva has Jonas and she has Isak and no other friends and she's lonely and she isn't happy. At the end of the story, she's developed so much, she's become more confident and she has this group of friends who she loves and she broke up with Jonas. <laughs> But she's better off without him. Yeah, and I like that the whole cheating wasn't the reason for the breakup. It heightened the drama. It was all about making Eva confront her flaws. My issue though is that Jonas, his flaws were never really dealt with in any significant way. I don't like that he was the one who cheated on Ingrid in the first place and I do think that Eva is at fault and that she was Ingrid's friend and she shouldn't go behind her friend's back and have sex with her friend's boyfriend. That is messed up but Jonas was the one who had the power to break up with Ingrid. Eva couldn't break up with Ingrid for Jonas, you know what I'm saying? He was the one who cheated and yet she had all of the consequences on her. He didn't seem to face any negative consequences other than the fact that he had a girlfriend who no longer trusted him. When it came to the whole dinner thing, okay one, I feel like the whole plot twist of oh he was really smoking isn't um it's not very satisfying. Could have gotten his pot at any other time. In fact, why didn't she ask? Why didn't you get your pot at any other time? I think that Jonas handled the whole thing worse than Jan because Jan was a dick to her, but then he apologized for talking to her like that. What I hated about Jonas was that he was lying to her the whole time and then he tried to turn around and make Eva feel guilty for suspecting something when he wasn't being honest. He told Eva Eva that she needs to stop being so insecure when he was the reason why she was so insecure. I read a comment on somebody who was reacting to Scum saying, oh, we all didn't like Jonas in the first season because our perception of him is shaped by miscommunications. It's like, no, there's a difference between miscommunication and straight up lying, lying, lying. And then when the other person suspects you of lying, covering that up by trying to make them feel guilty about not trusting you when they absolutely shouldn't trust you. As I said in 
My last video about Scum, I already knew that he wasn't cheating on Ingrid, so I was already mad at him for how he dealt with the whole situation and not because I was under this impression that he was cheating on Eva. He made her feel guilty and then he would sweet talk her and then he only came clean, not voluntarily, but because he got caught in a lie. So what was Eva supposed to think? As for the cheating, I honestly blame Penetrator Chris or Alex more than I blame Eva or Emma because in both cases, it'd be one thing if we saw her like do some sort of revenge thing where after she texts Jonas, she goes up to another guy and starts like kissing him and whatever. But what we saw is she went into an empty bedroom by herself, started crying by herself, and then some guy walks in and thinks this is an opportunity to get what he wants. And she stopped it after like three seconds anyway. So it's the punishment that she received for a three second kiss was so much harsher than it should have been. But I can understand how that could happen when you're in high school. And the only people who were there were those two people. So it's not like everybody who found out about it knows the full context of, well, she was really upset. She was crying. She kissed him for maybe a few seconds, but she very quickly stopped and decided not to do that. But yeah, she's like pretty much branded with the scarlet letter. But what about Jonas? What about Jan? Nobody really judges him for cheating on Ingrid. Everybody judges Emma or Eva. I had such a bad opinion of Jonas. I wanted them to break up much sooner than they did. And to be honest, I was like kind of happy that Isak sped up the process. Jan, I feel like is a lot sweeter. There were just times in the show when Emma would get upset and he seemed genuinely sorry, as opposed to Jonas, who would just roll his eyes a lot. He didn't seem ever genuinely sorry. I don't know, he'd have this expression or he'd say in a way that made me think that he was invalidating Eva's very valid emotions. One thing I did like about Norwegian Scum you know how in this third episode when we find out that Eva is all alone, she doesn't have any friends, and Jonas says whoever gets to be your friends is really lucky. I really love that line. That's like one of my favorite things that Jonas has ever said. I didn't like how Jan complimented Emma by insulting other girls. But anyway, as soon as Eva starts making friends, Jonas is immediately very critical of it. We never really see him meet the friend. We see him get introduced to Nora, but he doesn't really interact with them ever at all. And yet he's so judgmental, it really pissed me off. He knew how lonely she was. He knew that she had been cast out from her last group of friends. But then as soon as she gets friends, he's immediately critical of that. And I know that some people might justify it by saying, well, Sana said that she should break up with him, but that was just Sana. What do you say? She's going to move in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the problem? The problem is that we don't understand that the Russian time is just a capitalist arrangement. Blah, blah, blah. And that leads into my problem with French scum. I still think that Jonas was being a dick, but I can understand him being against the whole Rus, Rus, I'm pronouncing that all wrong, because capitalism, because they have to pay a lot of money and fundraise to get a bus, but throwing a party, I mean, why would he be judgmental of that? What's so like, evil capitalists about having a fucking party. He went to a concert. He's not against going to a party. So I feel like this is an example of where the French version borrowed dialogue from the original, but they really shouldn't have. They really should have stuck to their own thing because I cannot understand why he'd be like, oh, capitalism, blah, 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 when it's just She's planning on throwing a party. What the fuck's the matter with that? Another example of where they borrow dialogue when they probably shouldn't have, they probably should have written their own dialogue. They made Emma and Jan into 
completely different people than Jonas and Eva. But when everything came about about her cheating on him, he said that she doesn't have her own opinion. And it's like, no, 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 no. I can see how you might think that of Eva, even though Eva eventually stood up to Jonas and said, you were wrong. I did have my own opinion. And I felt like that was a very powerful scene, but I could at least understand why Jonas would mistakenly think that. Eva comes across as more passive in the first season and she eventually develops and grows. I love how when Nora told Eva to just talk to penetrated Chris about politics, she pretty much just repeats what Jonas says. But when Emma talks to Alex about politics, she actually talks about politics. She even says it's important to form your own opinion. She's more likely to stand up for herself. She's not passive at all. She doesn't really take much crap and I like that about her. So why would Jan think that she doesn't have her own opinion? She's, that just makes no sense. If they're gonna completely change up the characters, then have them say different things, even have them act in different ways. Follow through with those changes instead of just like taking a hard left and like ending back on the main road of the original show. Oh. And I guess I should mention this. So I really do like Alex, girl Alex in the show, but I know that her Norwegian counterpart was mainly used as comic relief and she's developed a little bit more in the later episodes of season four, but we barely get to see her. I really hope that she becomes more than comic relief in French scum. I know that a lot of my friends were really excited when she said that she had hooked up with a girl, but I'd be more excited if we get to know her better, if she becomes more developed. I'd be down with that. I love her. And I really, really hate that the first season of this show is only nine episodes long. And the second season, I heard, is like 12 to 13 episodes long. And I can see that already they're setting up things for this whole awful romance. And they're already rushing through Emma's story so much. And it makes me sad because... I said it before, season one is my favorite season. And I know that Yoli Andam meant that to just be like the prequel or prelude into Norhelm, but I honestly think that that was a significantly, significantly better story than the one that I saw in season two. Hi, welcome to um, my bookcase background, I guess. I'm sitting on the floor. I'm not gonna put up the sheets once again. Two things. Today is um, 421. I have seen all of season one of French Scum and I've not yet started season two and I probably, I, I don't have much motivation at all to continue. I do not think that it's terrible. I think that the actors are good. Well, most of the actors, I'm not impressed by Lucas. So even though I love the original season three, I'm not gonna watch that. I think I'll just stop here with French Scum, actually. I liked some of the things that they um, added to the show, but what they did bring to the show wasn't a ton. On Tuesday, I think it was, I watched the teaser trailer for the US version, and I'm like tentatively excited. I was definitely skeptical when the American version was announced, and I'm sure you might have watched the video in which I talked about how I'm not pleased with the idea that there's going to be an American version, but I'm hoping that this French version is everything that I was scared the American version would be, because I feel that this version, this French version, just came off as this very lazy translation, copy and paste. As I said, I'm criticizing the writing. I loved most of the acting, um, I guess the makeup, the music, the editing for the most part, cinematography. I didn't like some of the slow motion, but I liked most of the rest of it. I don't think that this is terrible, but that's because season one was actually very good, so. Yeah, but anyway, I, considering that the American version was the first one announced, and it's not the first one shown, hopefully they've been taking a lot of time really writing it, really preparing it, and just being creative so that it will be good. I'll be watching 
So yeah, I'll let you know what I think about that. So far, my favorite adaptation is the German one. So yeah, I think I'll uh, cut this now. And I think that since the other adaptations actually adapt the story to their own culture and they're different, I'm going to talk less about the original show in those videos, but we'll see.